Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today I'm going to talk about the largely ignored flare tool in Illustrator and how you can tweak the settings and transform it to make some cool stuff like this. The flare tool is in the same group as the rectangle tool and the other shape tools. And the first time I used it, I clicked on the artboard and got something like this. And I thought, well, that's not very interesting. And I think I forgot about it for a while, but the flare tool has special properties and transparencies that make it interact with whatever is beneath it. So it gives the effect of a lens flare from a camera when you're shooting into difficult lighting situations. Now, why there's a camera effect in Illustrator remains a mystery, but it can work in situations where you might expect it to, like on a reflective object, or where you might want to add a little pizzazz to your illustration. There are basically two ways to draw a flare. Just grab the tool and drag it on your artboard, and then reposition it as needed. You can also just click on the artboard with the tool, or select an existing flare, and double click on the tool to edit it. This dialog box has four sections, and when you make the changes, you can see them update on your artboard. The problem is it's hard to see it when you have the edges visible, so I'm going to hide those edges and start again. I'm also going to speed up the video because I talk faster than I work, so keep an eye on this flare as I make changes. The center section is pretty self-explanatory. You can change the diameter, the opacity, and the brightness. The rays can be turned on or off, and you can adjust the number and how long they are. And I can adjust the fuzziness for no other reason than I like the name of it. The halo refers to this kind of glare around the center, and you can see it better if you enlarge it. There's a lot of transparency on the halo. You can set the number of rings, the size, and the direction in which they fall. Now since there are a lot of transparent components in a flare, it reacts to whatever is underneath it. So if I take off this black background, for example, you can see that it looks a lot different. You can't really change the color of the individual parts and keep it live, but what you can do is edit the color using recolor artwork. So I'll select the flare, hide the edges, and then click this icon here, or go up to Edit, Edit Color, Recolor Artwork. And now I can substitute the colors that are in the flare for the ones that are in this color group. So let's create some artwork using the flare tool only. I'll start with an RGB document, and I've got a background layer that has a rectangle that's filled with a plain RGB black. I'm going to lock that layer and then create another one above it. So just take the flare tool and click on the artboard once to bring up the options. I'm going to uncheck the rings and then increase the opacity of the center and make some other adjustments. It doesn't really matter, just make something interesting. And when you get something you like, click OK. I'm going to hide those edges again. And then I'm just going to scrunch this down and widen it a little bit so it makes an oval. With the flare still selected, go up to Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. Be sure to click the Preview button. And I'm going to put a 20 degree angle in the Rotate field. And then I'll have it make 20 copies. Now the fun thing about this is that it's still a live effect. I've zoomed in some so you can see it better. So you can click the Transform effect in the Appearance panel and experiment with different settings. You can change the angle, move it, scale it. The possibilities are limitless. And remember that the flare interacts with what's ever underneath it, so I can alter the color of the background to achieve different color effects. Here are some more quick ones that I made. Have fun experimenting with the flare tool.